It was another hot night last night, and I'm starting to wonder if it's the 4th of July yet because it sounded like it. I mean, there were just booms and pops all night, things screeching through the sky. Uh, it seems like it's starting to intensify. In fact, I don't know, there's nothing going through right now, but I mean, you rarely have, you know, 10 minutes go by without hearing something uh, come from overhead. Uh, that kept me up for a while, but I, I don't know, I guess your body can only stay tense for so long. I ended up... Uh, Falling asleep eventually, I think I slept pretty well. Uh, the sun was pretty high in the sky when I woke up this morning, so I guess I woke up kind of late <laughs> for what that's worth. Um, and uh, today, uh, I'm, I'm planning on going and checking to see if, uh, if the forest is on fire down over where that huge one landed. There's still kind of some smoke coming from over in that direction. Maybe we'll get some rain at some point. It's so hot and humid right now, it feels like, man, if we can get some rain coming through it, man, it'd be thunderstorms. But, um, you know, at the moment, uh, you know, it's still dry. So I want to check just to see if, you know, there's a forest fire burn in my way and if I need to know about that. I don't want to just take like a leisurely stroll over there though. I want to make use of the time. So what I'm going to be doing as I go over is I want to do a lot of uh, wild edible plant collection. Uh, I know that there's a lot of uh, varied spaces between here and that direction. I've kind of explored off over there. A little bit and uh, there's a lot of forest area and there are some open fields and open fields tend to be the place where you get the most wild edible stuff. Uh, underneath the forest canopy there's some stuff here in fact I'm hoping I'm gonna be able to get some Indian cucumbers. Uh, I don't know if that's the PC term for them but you know in every book I've ever seen they're called Indian cucumbers uh, and it, it's a, a nice little plant because the the root underneath the ground is kind of sweet it has like a sweet cucumbery taste to it and that'd be kind of a nice treat. I've seen actually a couple of them around the camp here itself, and I'm hoping I can find like some patches, you know, uh, when I when I head out and find some more of those because that'd be a nice treat. So one way or the other, I'm going to come back with knowledge, and I'm going to come back with food. So I think that'll make for a good day. Oh, here we go. This is one of my favorites right here. This is the Indian cucumber, and uh, these are a great little wild edible in the forest because they they have kind of a sweetness to them. Uh, the way you can identify them uh, is the way that the uh, the veins and the leaves they all run parallel to each other. You can see there's a central vein and then a couple of little veins that run along the side of that vein and they're parallel. Now if you see one vein down the center and then little veins branching off of that uh, that is a different type of plant um, which I'm not familiar with and may or may not be edible but it's not an Indian cucumber. Uh, and the way that we collect this is uh, we're not eating the leaves. What we're eating is down at the bottom of the stem right here. These tend to grow in uh, forest soils that are pretty uh, fluffy. Oftentimes in pine forests I'll, I'll tend to find them a lot. And we're just going to follow the stem right down. And what we're looking for is a little white tuber. We, oh, it broke off but it's still going to be down there. There's a little white tuber down here. There's the root right there. And somewhere along here there's going to be a little bulge. Here it is. There we go. This little guy right here. Now it's small. It's not like you're finding a huge potato in the ground. But what's great about these is, like I said, they've got kind of a sweetness to them. And I would, of course, wash this off before I eat it. But it, it tastes a little bit like a sweet cucumber. And it's a really nice treat, whereas a lot of wild edible plants, maybe they're a little bit bitter or they're sour, but, you know, sugar in nature is a little bit rare. That's why, as a life form, we tend to crave it. Um, and it's nice to be able to find a source of it in the tubers of these little plants. Several years ago, I was driving towards Devil's Tower in Wyoming. That's in the western United States. And I was heading there from the southwest. Uh, after about an hour of driving, I noticed that the sun was in the exact opposite position in the sky that it should have been in if I was heading in the right direction. As it turns out, I was heading towards something that my GPS claimed was Devil's Tower. I honestly don't know what it was, but it wasn't the actual Devil's Tower. I flipped around, pointed myself in the right direction, and ended up heading there. And uh, I bring that up because something similar just happened to me right now. Now, uh, yesterday, when that uh, meteor came in, it landed off in the east. Uh, that's where it crashed, that's where I saw the smoke. Uh, when I got up this morning, I, without really thinking, I just started heading towards the smoke, but I've been walking south all day, which makes me think, you know, whatever meteor landed over there, I, I guess it stopped burning, it's not burning anymore, and maybe there was another one last night, but there are a lot 
There's apparently a lot coming down, and uh, you know, I suppose I should check this out anyway, and I'm, you know, I'm picking up lots of food as I go. So, I mean, it's not like a waste of time or anything, but uh, apparently there are a lot of meteors coming down, and they are starting more than one fire. And that's got me feeling a little bit on edge. One of the great things about wild plant identification, I think, is that you don't have to know everything before you can get started. I think a lot of people uh, felt that they couldn't really even get going with wild plant foraging because if they didn't know everything, then they wouldn't know anything at all. And that's really not the case. You can start off knowing just a few of the easy plants to identify, and then from there, you can kind of branch out and learn more things. And that's a totally okay way to do it. What I'm looking at right here is a plant that I don't know what it is. Um, I'm not sure what this is, but I'm uh, focusing on it now at the moment because this is the plant that I was referring to earlier with the uh, Indian cucumber, and this is the one that is not Indian cucumber. See how it has a central vein down the middle and then there's branching veins coming off from that one? This one is not Indian cucumber, and I don't need to know exactly what it is, all I need to know is that it's not the plant that I'm looking for. And there are so many different plants that are like that, where you can start with plants that are easy to identify, start with those, and then kind of branch out. And you don't have to know the entire world of botany in order to start, because there are some plants that are pretty darn easy to identify. I think Indian cucumbers are one of those. Dandelions, I think for a lot of people, dandelion is an edible plant, and plenty of people can identify those. You can start with just a few, and then you can kind of branch out from there. And this right here, these are Indian cucumbers, and I'm noticing that this one here is getting up towards the fruiting stage. Uh, once uh, Indian cucumbers get a little bit larger, they'll send up this secondary little parasol there. And uh, if I go down to the bottom of this, I should be treated with an extra large tuber. Whenever I do gather wild edibles, uh, I, I, I like to leave some of them in the ground so that they can spread for next year, and, and that is something, even during an emergency situation, I think is a good idea. Unless you're absolutely desperate and you're starving to death, it's always a good idea to leave more for later. And So I'm not going to clear all of these, but I am going to take this extra big tuber right here, and you can see it was starting to, uh, starting to grow another one right there, but that's an extra large tuber, and that'll be just as sweet as the small ones. One of the great places for looking for wild edible plants is the periphery between the land and the water. I've been walking along this little stream and found a few things, but in particular, I'm excited about that. To me, that looks like wild blueberries. But the thing is, I'm not 100% certain that these are blueberries. I see behind them that there are some raspberry branches here, and there are raspberries on there. And one nice thing about raspberries, I know, is that anything in North America that looks ostensibly like a raspberry, maybe isn't a raspberry, but it's at least edible. It's not something toxic. I don't know if that's true of blueberries, but I've got something that is gonna allow me to figure that out, which is a really, really important asset in anybody's bug out bag. And that important item to me is a wild plant identification book. I've always kept mine in a plastic bag in my bug out bag, so if it ever got damp or humid, the book itself wouldn't be destroyed. A book like this is super valuable. This one here has all sorts of edible wild plants in North America. There are different guides for different regions, but I've always kept this with me because while it's possible that, you know, at home to kind of flip through the book and try to learn from it, it's much easier and much more intimate. And I think you get a lot more out of it when you have the book and you're out in nature and you have the plants right in front of you. So you can kind of, uh, you know, reference the plant directly into the book and have any questions that you have answer back and forth and I find that you learn a lot more that way. Uh, also, it's really hard to keep this much knowledge in your head. So when you're out in the field, it's nice to be able to refer to it. And I'll uh, give you kind of a story of something that happened to me that illustrates that point. Many years ago, I was working uh, in a, a part of the country that I you know, didn't live in 
and there were different wild edible plants there. Between my jobs, I was going out taking hikes in the woods, and one day I found wild edible onions. Those didn't grow really so much in my area, but I found them in this area and I was excited. So I was gathering wild edible plants, including these onions, and I brought them back uh, and I made a salad for myself. I had some salad dressing, I threw it all together. I was very excited about it and I started eating it. And then I started thinking to myself, you know what? Wild onions have something, some features in common with a plant called camas, in particular, deaf camas. Uh, so you can imagine where my mind went instantly. Now, one moral of this story is you should check things thoroughly before you put them into your body. I'd already eaten the stuff and while I was chewing on it, it kind of went through my head. You know, did I just eat, eat death camas? It was nice to have this book because I was able to instantly go in and find out whether I needed to drive myself to the emergency ward or if it was actually wild onion. As it turned out, it was wild onion. I was able to identify it by the smell, uh, but it was nice to be able to refer back to it. I think it's a great idea to carry a book like this around with you because while some things are really easy and really obvious and you can learn a bunch right away, there's all sorts of things you might encounter, uh, encounter in your environment and it's great to be able to learn on the fly and have something that you can refer to. Right now at this moment, I'm looking right over here at one of my favorite wild edible plants because it's so easy to identify and it's right over here across the stream. It's really easy to identify from afar because all the plants in this family have very similar features. And this family of plants is referred to as the mint family. You can see it right here. Uh, plants in this family obviously are mint, oregano, basil. There are a lot of different plants in this family. And what's great about them is they all share a couple common features. One of them is if you look at the plant from above, you can see that there's kind of an alternating pattern of 90 degree angles between the leaves. Uh, one set of leaves, if you look at it from the side, are going in this direction here, and then the next set up are perpendicular to that at 90 degrees. Then you go up to the next set, and they're perpendicular to the set below, the same angle as the, the set below that, and they just kind of alternate as it goes up the plant. The other identifying feature of mint family plants is the stem, and the stems of mint family plants are not circular, they're not round, they're squarish shaped, they've got angles on them, and if you roll them in your fingers, you can very easily feel these squarish corners on them. And between those two traits, it's very easy to identify a mint family plant. Now, like I said, not every plant in the mint family is mint, uh, and not every plant in the mint family even tastes particularly good. But one nice thing about mint family plants is that none of them are poisonous. So at the very least, you're not gonna be poisoning yourself if you try nibbling on a plant from the mint family. One aspect to wild plant identification that's really quite apart from any question of wilderness survival is what it adds to your experience of being out in nature when you are out in the woods or out in the fields or, or walking around through any kind of a natural environment. I know that for myself, once I started learning a lot of wild edible plants, it really enhanced my experience of being out in nature. Whereas before, and for many people, being out in nature is sort of like walking through uh, uh, an environment that's almost like a stranger. It's, the, it's sort of like just background wallpaper. Once you start being able to identify a lot of uh, plants that you find as you walk along, instead of the environment around you feeling like a stranger, it really starts feeling like you're being surrounded by a lot of close friends. In this case, right here I see a bunch of jewelweed. Now, jewelweed is somewhat edible. It's not the kind of thing you'd want to eat a lot of. It's more of a medicinal plant. And one of the benefits uh, that I've really fo always found throughout time of jewelweed is that if you take the leaves and the stalks, and I will just pull this one up right here, they have kind of like a, a squishy, uh, juicy kind of stalk. If you take the juice out of there, mash it around, kind of mix it in with the leaves to make kind of a, uh, a pulp, uh, it is a really helpful and I find effective uh, remedy for things like mosquito bites. If you have an itchy mosquito bite and you rub this kind of stuff up, make a little green pulp and smear it on the area that's uh, affected by the mosquito bite, I find that it is a, it, it really goes a long way to kind of soothing out uh, the, uh, the discomfort uh, from those. Even if it's only psychosomatic, <laughs> it seems to work. Uh, and there are other things right in this immediate area. And there are probably a lot of plants that I'm just floating over that are edible that I'm just not familiar with yet. But one that I am familiar with, right here, 
are nettles. Uh, and nettles are a really great food asset. Uh, nettles come in a couple different varieties, uh, and one of them is known as the stinging nettle. And I don't know whether this is stinging nettle or not. You can identify nettles uh, with this kind of basic leaf shape, kind of the way that the leaves grow around the stalk. And in particular, on this one, you can see these kinds of uh, pre-flower bud areas starting to develop. On the bottom, I'm seeing kind of these prickly little spines, which to me suggests maybe this is stinging nettle. But the nice thing even about stinging nettle is that it is still edible. If you take these leaves, and I am gonna take a bunch of these leaves, and you uh, are able to gather them and boil them, once you boil them, it breaks down the acid that is in the needles and even wilts the needles into nothing. And it's a really, really nice uh, kind of bulk green food item, kind of like uh, cooking up a bunch of spinach. So this is a really nice crop of this stuff. Again, I'm gonna make sure I don't take all of it. I'll you know, take some portion of it. Uh, but nettles of all types are a, uh, a really delicious add to a meal. I'm getting up to the source of the smoke here and it looks like uh, there's kind of a clearing and I should be able to get a sense of how it's burning. I'm hoping that I'm going to get in there and see that it's, you know, putting itself out instead of getting bigger, but I guess we'll see about that. Uh, the day's gone pretty well. Uh, I've got a, a lot of leaves in the pack and, uh, and that's what I got is uh, a lot of leaves. Um, you know, that's, that tends to be what you get when you do wild edible foraging is there's a lot of leaves in there, uh, and it's really reinforcing in me that I, I really got to get going with uh, the garden. And you know, I, I should I should do some more rounds uh, at some of the houses and see if I can find some potatoes. I think potatoes would be great. You know, there's some calories in there, uh, and and you know, beyond that, you know, start getting more serious about trapping and hunting. Even you know, there's only so long that you can survive. Uh, you know, scraping off of the remains of civilization, I really got to get something going here that's kind of self-sustaining, and uh, I don't have that yet. But um, anyway, I, I mean, yeah, I'm happy I got a lot of leaves today, but uh, I'm going to need more than that long term. All right, here we go. It's definitely burning a lot. There's a lot of smoke here. And... Holy... That's not an asteroid. Please subscribe and tune in every Friday at 4.30 New York time for a new video. And if you'd like to support this channel, you can do so both through Patreon or PayPal.